the Thoughty Orty podcast. There tend to be some some issues in terms of like socialising sometimes. What what kind of things do you think? You know those those would be like uh, for I think ADHD years. I, for ADHD years, for socialising, we can very often overshare and then feel bad about it afterwards. Mm. Um, and that comes with that impulsivity and regulation. And, you know, sometimes we like to go hard and then we need to relax. And I know that individuals with autism as well very often need that time as well to come down mm-hmm. from all the stimulation that they're seeking throughout the week and throughout the day. So if I find that when I'm, I'm thinking of one individual in my head, but I'm not going to name them, of course, but um, I know someone that does have like ADHD diagnosis. I don't think they're autistic. They haven't explored it or anything, but I, I'm, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> but I find that for me, for me talking to them, it tends to be like this this kind of strange dynamic where I'm very sort of direct and blunt, and I can kind of I tend tend to be able to concentrate more on on the topic. Whereas when I'm talking to someone with you know ADHD, it tends to be the case that we'll talk about I'll talk about something, I'll give a monologue, and then they'll start talking about it, but then they'll kind of veer off track yes and just start talking about other things <laughs> and then i and then i ask a question yes and then i kind of bring them back to it or or it can be like sort of on the more like short term thing where i start speaking i'm very slow in my processing and sometimes i'm quite mellow in the way that i deliver things yes so sometimes just, they'll like you, you just know, reminded me concentration Yes, as I'm doing to you right now. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> no, you it's just right. reminded me like my interactions with certain people with autism, very literal. My mm-hmm. assistant has autism and it has helped me become such a better communicator where I got distracted in my communication with ADHD, like you're saying. But you can't when you're talking to someone with autism. They need to know black and white (laughs) what it is that you need from them, right? Or Mm -hmm. what it is that you mean. Those little nuances in humor or in knowing someone who I'm close with who likely has autism as well, you know, when you're feeling a certain way without expressing it, saying, I Mm -hmm. am sad, or I am feeling this way, it might be hard for that person to pick up on how you're feeling. Yeah, that that aspect of cognitive empathy, definitely. I don't think it's, am I right in thinking that that's not something that ADHD has experienced? Like the, it's phrased as other things. Um, Cognitive empathy, basically, it's the ability to do exactly what what you just said. It's the ability to to know how someone's feeling just based on indirect cues, and not that sort of direct verbal kind of explanation. More emotional expression over emotional explanation. Correct. And um, I don't think that an individual with ADHD, um, from the majority of people that I work with and mm. know have as hard of a time with that. Yeah. I believe that we're more hypersensitive. Hey up YouTube, hope you have enjoyed this podcast clip so far. If you want to check out the full episode, you can find it here on my YouTube channel under the podcast section, or you can go to Spotify, Apple, Google to check it out on different podcasting streaming services. If you have enjoyed this video thus far, please make sure to like, perhaps drop me a subscribe if you want to see some more content from me and drop a comment down below, even if it's something simple like an emoji or a, or a heart. Uh, it really does help satisfy those big YouTube algorithm gods in the sky. Anyway, I'll let you go back to it. And because of that, we have that empathy 
to be hyper aware of how other people are feeling to a point where we're compensating for someone else and their needs and we put that over our own. So we're like so alert and aware of everyone else's feelings. Mm-hmm. I think it's, um, you know, there, there, there is sort of like a sort of a difference between like cognitive and adaptive and adaptive is that element of once you know how someone's feeling, you're, you're empathic, you respond, you respond correctly to, to how they're feeling. So you'll, you'll comfort them. You'll do things for them. You'll talk to them. Is, is that aspect of knowing, I think that's the hardest and it's, it's been described as other things like theory of mind or like, you know, the, the sort of the difficulty of putting yourself in someone else's shoes. And also like in terms of emotional expression as well, because we don't tend to have as much of the facial expression, the body language and the tonality changes when we, when we're in certain emotions. So it's hard for us to really identify with someone when they're, they're kind of like openly expressing it, you know, because perhaps when we're sad, we might just look completely blank and just talk in a very sort of mellow voice, you know, but we might be like 95% anxious, like we're nearly, nearly going to have a blow up. Whereas for other people, you can see it, they'll be like fidgeting, they'll be like, you know, like showing those kind of visual signs. So that's probably that's probably a good good sort of key difference, that sort of cognitive empathy part because Yes. And to that point too, you know, you can think that someone with autism might be mad at you mm-hmm. by having that tonality of voice. Yeah. But they're not. Or it's just, just not, the way or that not they're being speaking. serious. Yeah, yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You have, you have so many issues, like especially within like the realm of psychology and stuff. Like when you get in counseling or you're working with like a mental health worker or you're getting psychotherapy. Or even to be honest, in most places, like in life, we tend to approach people and say something that is completely conflicting with how we're acting like and that that can be really hard for people to kind of grasp we call it like flat affect Mm -hmm. like we don't appear to be in distress but we definitely are i think it, it can make it really hard in those settings because perhaps people might not take us as seriously if we say i'm i'm very depressed and i'm you know, not, not feeling good, and I'm thinking all about all these these horrible things. Uh, but if someone said, uh, "I'm feeling really depressed, and I'm just I'm thinking about such horrible things," and there's more of that like congruence between the two, right? So people it's take not it what more you seriously. say; it's how you say it, right? Yeah. So a, a lot of the like training that people do to kind of understand autism in terms of emotions kind of focuses around, you know, if if we're directly explaining our emotions it literally means that it's not it's not less by the fact that we're not expressing it as much on the outside so it's very interesting like it contributes to things like um what's the name of those faux regulation sort of faking that you're regulated when you're not yeah so like inside you your that mind's masking. going all places yeah you're masking that intense panic but on the outside you're like calm and you're talking to people like you usually would. But yeah, they've done some studies around it. It's really interesting, like around like cortisol and sort of it being heightened more in us and then taking longer to fall back down. Hmm. So would you say that the anxiety associated with autism is higher than the anxiety associated with ADHD? I'm not Usually. sure. Okay. It tends, I mean, just from my experience, autistic people, we tend to retreat when we're anxious. I don't mm-hmm. know sort of on the the ADHD side because I imagine that there's a lot of, due to the fact it's that you have that hyperactivity element that you are moving a lot and you, you're sort of doing things and you're sort of coping mm-hmm. with that 
anxiety and stress by getting the movement. Whereas for us, we kind of just sit with it and just kind of ignore it. And or mm. sometimes just not even recognize it that that we're we're feeling that way. So it might, it might I think it, it might there might be some like differences in how we sort of process it, possibly. Interesting. 